welcome to our the first webinar forum organized by the Mindanoos. And we would like to welcome our speakers. Um, Dr. Gaili Lagan, who will give us later on the opening remarks. Engineer Antonia Ebo, um, Engineer Mira Ferrellanos Barquilla, Engineer Neil and Anthony Jamili, and Chinky Polinio Gole. Uh, we also have um, listeners from our schools and those who are also uh, from other corporate organizations. Um, to start off, we would like to remind the participants that for, that for audio and video, we encourage you to keep your mic muted to avoid distracting the speakers and other participants. Whether to turn your video on or off is your discretion. For questions and answers for our friends uh, from our colleagues from the media, questions may only be asked through chat. While we encourage you to ask questions, we will give priority to questions from the media due to the limited time of the forum. The media may also ask one question, another follow-up. And uh, other participants who want to ask questions, uh, they will only be limited to one question. In sending your questions, please include your name and the name of your organization. So that's it. Uh, the forum is entitled, uh, this question is asking, where do our disposable PPEs go? This is uh, an assessment of a waste management in the time of COVID-19. So um, uh, to start, may we call on Dr. Gail Ilagan, the president of the Mindanao Institute of Journalism that runs the Mindanaos. Dr. Gail? Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. It is our pleasure to welcome you to this webinar. <clears throat> this forum is organized, of course, by Minda News in partnership with Internews and EJN or Earth Journalism Network. Minda News, as we know, is an independent news service operating from Mindanao that has a long tradition of providing the community of media practitioners and students a venue to examine crucial issues affecting our community life here in Mindanao. In keeping with the COVID times, <clears throat> we have turned this forum virtual, but we remain just as steadfast in our intent to raise awareness as together we review existing policies towards pushing for a more informed policy recommendation. Our topic today is on PPE, waste management. PPE or personal protective equipment. This has entered into popular lexicon these days. PPE is now, of course, an indispensable part of our OOTD. Don't leave the house without it. For many of us ordinary citizens, we wash and wear our PPE. Still, there are many of us who use the disposable kind as a matter of preference or because it is required by our profession. Thus, disposable PPE is now making its way to our solid waste receptacles and raising concerns about proper waste management. This is what the forum will be about today. We will hear from our public health and environmental officials, as well as from representatives from environmental research and advocacy groups that we have invited as resource persons. So to our participants, please feel free to raise your questions and comments on chat at any point during the discussion. Here's hoping for a fruitful learning session today. Welcome everyone and thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Gail. Again, uh, we would like to remind uh, all the participants and the speakers that we are on Zoom and that we are also live on uh, the FB page of Minda News. The, for those who want to know more, because I'm sure this is a very interesting topic, you can hear us later on on Spotify or Anchor on the, the platform of Minda News Podcast. So our first presenter, our first speaker is the leader of the decontamination and water sanitation and hygiene or WASH team of the Department of Health in Davao Region. She also heads the COVID-19 Rapid Response Team. 
please welcome Engineer Antonieta Ebol. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Happy Kadayawan. So, in behalf of yeah. our uh, director, Dr. Annabel Piumang, I will discuss with you uh, what has been done and what is the practice of our uh, hospitals and uh, th temporary treatment uh, and uh, monitoring facility in Davao region. Okay, let me discuss with you uh, the use and disposal of personal protective equipment, our healthcare management in time of this COVID-19 pandemic. So our problem actually, as mentioned, we have increasing COVID cases in the region. Because of this, we have increasing waste generated from COVID-19 facilities, such as our hospitals and our TTMF. LGU has no designated treatment, storage disposal facility for infectious waste, and another two others. Oh, we have only one EMB accredited service provider in the region. So our Bible for this healthcare waste management is our DOH, WHO Healthcare Waste Management, fourth edition. And with this, we have these interim guidelines on the management of healthcare waste in facilities, community quarantine units, temporary treatment, and monitoring facilities of the COVID-19. Our objective for these guidelines is to provide everybody on the proper management of COVID-19 related healthcare waste management in all facilities. And our object general guidelines, all health facility, the community quarantine, temporary treatment and monitoring facilities should have a waste management plan to be followed accordingly. And all care, healthcare waste generated in the management, treatment of suspect probable and confirmed COVID patient should be considered as infectious waste. So there is another department uh, memorandum 2020-0167, which is the interim guidelines on proper handling, disinfection of non-critical items used in the management of COVID-19 in the facilities and temporary treatment facilities. One is the use of PPE should used for disinfection of these items and environment shall be considered as infectious waste again, which shall be properly treated prior to disposal in accordance with healthcare waste management policies and procedures. So for a fact, uh, ano ba yung sinasabi natin PPE? So PPE composed of the clothes use, shoe cover, we have the apron, um, disposable apron, long sleeve gown, thick gloves, face mask, goggles, or we have these face shields now. And this must be used by the health facility personnel. So we can imagine how many of these are coming and using every day. Designated in collecting, segregating, handling, transporting of this healthcare waste. So that composed of the PPE. Other guidelines should have hand hygiene must be also done after removing the PPEs. Only personnel trained on the rest and safety procedures of this healthcare waste must be designated to handle the related waste. Storage of infectious waste must follow safe retention and until it is treated collected for transport to off-site treatment facility, and infectious waste must be separated from other generated waste and have a dedicated area or space. For the specific guideline, of course, we have the waste generation. Waste should be properly segregated. Segregation and collection, appropriate label and signage of plastic bags, waste bins, container must be done. Appropriate receptacle, we have the yellow bag for the infectious waste, must be available for the use of healthcare worker. Waste bins and sharp container must be collected when there are three fourths full of the waste in the popono, must be properly sealed prior to transport. Infectious waste should not be mixed with other waste handling and collection. For the storage, infectious waste may be stored temporarily in designated area. Disinfection of storage must be done regularly at least once a day prior to transport. And all healthcare facilities must conform with the rules and regulation mandated by our partner EMB DNR. So what has been done? The DOH oriented and circulated these guidelines and manual to the 
provincial local government units, the municipal government units, the healthcare waste management manual, which is the latest, the fourth edition. All the DOH memos and guidelines has been disseminated and oriented in, to our partners. We have also requested our uh, provincial local government unit, municipal local government unit to establish temporary treatment and storage and disposal facilities of infectious waste through a letter to our own, their own mayor, the chair of the regional in, um, interagency task force. We have monitored the waste disposal of Southern Philippines Medical Center, the biggest hospital in the city designed for COVID-19 patients. The DRMC, which is the Dabo Regional Medical Center and the treatment, temporary treatment and monitoring facilities. We have also sent memo to our service provider. We have one, only one service provider in Region 11 on the proper schedule and time and collection of generated waste based on this DOH healthcare waste management annual. And of course, we have a proper and close coordination with our partner agency, the LGUs, the EMB, and the CENRO. So what's the practice in Davao region? The Davao City LGU contracted a Third party service provider for collection and hauling of this infectious waste in all the TTMF in Davao City. The Davao DOH Center for Health Development with the SPMC, Southern Philippines Medical Center, Davao Regional Medical Center contracted the same service provider. Infectious waste are treated with chlorine prior to collection of the third party or our service provider, while the private hospitals follow the treatment and disposal. On DOH, well, DOH WH Healthcare Waste Management Manual. Next slide. So, this is one of our uh, documentation the hauling of infectious waste. All the collectors uh, are VTPEs. And I think uh, that will be all for this talk. Thank you and happy Kadayawan again. Thank you very much, Engineer Ebel. It was really uh, very interesting to look at how the, the process of, the, of keeping the PPEs. Those who would like to ask questions, you would like to answer that uh, during the open forum. So we have to um, start with our, our second presenter. To talk about the situation and the efforts of the Environment Department in tackling ways such as the disposable PPEs, our next speaker is a senior environmental management specialist of the Environmental Management Bureau in Davao region. Please welcome Engineer Mira Fair Llanos Barquilla. Happy Kadayawan to all. Good morning. So, in general, I will be ta uh, talking about managing healthcare waste. Uh, since the PPE is, is just one of the healthcare waste that we that our government is trying to manage. So under our A6969, we have Titles one, uh, Titles 2 and Title 3. The Title 3 that has DAO 2013-22, this is the manual for management of uh, hazardous waste. So parang ito yung magiging Bible natin. So under Table 2.1, M501, Yung hazardous waste number niya is M501, M501, that's healthcare waste containing pathological, pathogenic, and infectious wastes and sharks. That includes the PPE since it's already infected with, it's contaminated with uh, virus or something. So during the ECQ, the Environmental Management Bureau, in response to this uh, rising problem, issued interim guidelines, the Memorandum Circular 2020-014, 015, and 016, which allows the uh, healthcare waste generators to secure uh, special permit to transport even though they are not registered because under, our, uh, under the DAO, they should, the generator, the transporter, and the treater should be registered with the EMB. However, with this um, pandemic, under this interim guidelines, even though the generators are not registered with EMB, still they are allowed to secure the uh, permit to transport of these wastes. 
However, on June 1, 2020, the EMD implemented the online system for registration. So the issuance of SPTT was stopped because we need to uh, register all the generators, the transporters and the treaters with this new system. However, on August 4, the Bureau issued, the Bureau Director issued a memorandum order to all regional directors. Again, binalik yung issuance ng SPTT. Because uh, nakita po natin, the problem is with the registration, lalong tatagal bago ma, ma, makakuha ng permit yung generator. So magtatambak ngayon yung, has, yung healthcare waste, especially with the volume of the PPE. So ngayon, we have the manual issuance of SPTT. However, it shall be exclusive only for facilities that are designated as temporary quarantine facilities by the IATF. So hindi kasali na yung other private hospitals. Yung quarantine facilities na ngayon na designated by IATF yung covered nito. And uh, the jurisdiction over the issuance of this SPTT, kung saan nandun yung TSB facility, doon na region sila kukuha ng SPTT. Not kung saan ang generator, kundi kung saan ang TSB facility. Anyway, um, as per the that memorandum, we will we try to simplify the requirements. So we are still going back to 2020-14. These are the requirements. So it's simple. But kailangan pa rin registered yung transporter natin and yung treater. Kahit hindi registered yung PSD facility. I don't know. The generator, I mean. So how do we monitor the flow? yung pag-transport ng waste. So from the generator, we have this manifest system. From the generator, mag, uh, they have to sign the manifest, fill in the manifest form that the EMB issues to the applicant, uh, to the proponent. And then, si transporter, pagtanggap niya ng waste, fill up din naman niya yung uh, way, uh, form, manifest form. And then, si treatment facility, fill up and niya yung form. It's just a cycle and then submit the form to EMB. That's how we monitor the flow of the waste generation and until treatment. And after the final disposal, the treater or the TSD facility or the disposal facility will issue the certificate of treatment to the generator and copy furnish the EMB. That's how we monitor. However, the uh, the management of the whole management of this flow is with the DOH and the LGU. But as EMB, we issue the necessary permits and we monitor the flow to make sure that uh, lahat to na pupunta dun sa dapat kalalagyan, hindi kung saan saan lang po tinatapon, kasi that. That's where the problem goes. Pag saan saan lang tinatapon, lalo pat infectious ito. Okay, that's all for EMB. Thank you very much, Ma'am uh, Engineer Berkilia. So um, we would like to listen to the third presenters, Radin Solutions Corporations. But as Rob is um, preparing the the presentation. We would like to inform you that this web forum was conceptualized um, from a, uh, a special, I mean, the new special report entitled Policy Review of Waste Management Needed as Davao City Grapples with Household PPE Waste, an article written by Joel Escovilla. So the next, our next speaker is. Uh, a very young Dabawenyo innovator and scientist who devised an environmentally sound machine to process medical waste, which now include those that they have potentially carried the coronavirus. Let us hear about their technology and reason behind their risky 
enterprise or hazard of the enterprise. From the research and development manager of Red Green Solutions Corporation, Engineer Neil Anthony Jamili. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, good morning. Happy Kadayawan. Uh, can we have the slides first? But before that, I'd like to correct you. Uh, this is actually a team of engineer engineers who work on solutions for the medical waste industries. So we begin. Okay, so uh, first I had to clarify the difference between Rad Green Solutions and Maya Med Waste. So Rad Green Solutions is the company responsible for the manufacturing of the systems used by Maya Med Waste Solutions. Maya Med Waste, which is the only DNR accredited waste treatment in Davao region. Okay, so these are the very common use that we do have. The, this is also an imminent fear that we are actually facing. The infectious waste just being thrown everywhere without solution. So the presence of our company, Rad Green Solutions and Maya Med Waste has been uh, more important, like it's considered to be very, very important. I'm gonna show you how Rad Green Solutions and Maya Med Waste is operating. So we have different systems under ISO certification, which includes pyroclave systems. These are the systems that we install to most of our installations across the country today. We currently have eight installations, two of which are operated by Maya Medway Solutions, and the others are operated by different LGUs as well as Department of Health centers. So it's developed and patented and manufactured by Rad Green Solutions, a Davao based engineering company. And next, please. Uh, its technology is compliant with the Philippine Clean Air Act which means that we had to pass all emission standards before we treat medical waste. And also it's compliant with the DOH Healthcare Waste Management Manual, which is the mandate that we are currently following right now in terms of the disposal of medical waste, which includes the COVID waste and other waste that we actually cater. Next, please. So we're also the member, the member, uh, a member of the Filipino Inventor Society, sponsored by, uh, catered by the Department of Science and Technology. So here's the pyroclave systems and how it works. Okay, so the pyroclave system actually we have two separate systems. The other one is the beetle, which we are currently using in Davao City. It doesn't have shredding but it is capable of treating medical waste, which includes PPEs. Uh, the Healthcare Waste Ma Management Manual mandate states that 121 degrees Celsius at 30 minutes, but pyroclave systems installed in Davao, which includes Beetal, is capable of reaching up to 300 degrees Celsius for more than 30 minutes, and this is through indirect burning. So it undergoes a process of pyrolysis, or thermal disinfection po. So this is the only medical waste treatment machine that has its own certificate of product registration given by the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, together with the Department of Health. So we have permits for the operations, not only coming from DNR, but also from FDA. So you can see there that it's installed in Barangay New Carmen Tugbok District, Davao City. It's the landfill that we do have here in Davao City. There's also our PSD there, but we have a transporter, which is CLAD Transport, and the treater is Maya Medways Solutions. So every now and then, we have this assurance to assure the public that we pass through general bacteriological tests. According to DOH, we have four levels of disinfection which includes bacteria, viruses, protozoa, and other pathogenic sources. So in terms of our internal testing, we always include Geobacillus thermophilus strips under Mesolabs USA. So our standards is actually compliant to the National Reference Laboratory by DOH, which means that all bacteria and viruses is actually killed through the process of putting it in our system, pyroclave systems. 
across Davao City right now or Davao region, we're actually capable of treating 50 tons of medical waste per month. For the last two months, perhaps, for, 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 I mean for medical waste, which includes all COVID facilities in, in Davao region. So, so far, 80% usually of the medical waste na we consider infectious is COVID, COVID considered waste. So, we have this air emission because aside from the COVID waste, it is also important that emission is monitored. So, every now and then, we have emission yearly per installation, which includes dioxins and furans which are carcinogens. Uh, we're, the only we're the only machines that has tested dioxins and furans for emission. So here's our waste output. I think this is the most critical part for the general public to see. Uh, first, uh, the medical waste actually is transported to us. It's in yellow bags. But after the treatment, it, it's already considered as general municipal waste. So it's placed now to black bags and considered to be thrown at landfills but a separate section or area which is still medical waste. Okay, so our waste output is dry and shredded. Though we are capable of carbonizing our medical waste, there's a mandate and guidelines that we don't need to carbonize it based on DNR National Office. So we moved on to sterilize, disinfected, medical waste, which is the following pictures. So we proceed on the next slide, please. We will show categories of medical waste. So we have the infectious waste. Nasa yellow bag pa po ito, but we put it on a uh, meron green bag sa loob per, per bags ata ng hospital. So before, this is from yellow bags. After, this is the output. The weight reduction is around 20 to 30%. And our volume reduction is 20 to 40 percent. These are infectious waste. So we also have the sharps, needles. Uh, hospitals and medical clinics actually do have their puncture-proof boxes. However, if there are instances na walang puncture-proof boxes, they used to put it in PET bottles, and then three fourths is the maximum volume. Then before. Then after, minimal weight and volume reduction, but it is surely treated and disinfected already. This includes needles and syringe. So our facility is an ISO certified facility 9001-2015, and we're pushing through environmental certification also per ISO standards. So our current installation so far across the country, we have strategically installed to the following areas. Okay, so these two operations are considered uh, under Maya Medway Solutions, Valenzuela Metro Manila, which is responsible across Metro Manila and NCR regions. Um, and we also have this one in Davao City, which is operating in Tugbok, in, in the landfill that you have, our TSD. Okay, so we have one in Naga City. This one, the other installations actually Naga City is operated by government, by LGUs and DOH, Albay in, in Bicol region, EVRMC, Eastern Visayas Regional Medical Center. This one is in BRTTH, Palabi, Bicol Regional Training Hospital. One is EVRMC, Eastern Visayas Regional Medical Center in Tacloban. And the other one is in Coronadal, South Cotabato. Actually, South Cotabato is already operating for near seven years under their LGU operation. So uh, the good thing about LGU operations is they can mandate that they will be the only one responsible for the collection of all medical waste in their areas of responsibilities. So the latest one, we have one in Compostela Valley. Uh, this is actually under certifications by applications to DNR. It's installed in Compostela Valley Provincial Hospital under DOH project. So we also have in Sarangani Province, this, this one is under LGU by the province of Sarangani. And Marawi Amay Pakpak Medical Center. So across the years, here are our milestones. So we actually started with DTI Silicon Valley uh, in California for plug and play three months there. Product Development and Design Center also 
from DTI and were awarded by ASEAN Entrepreneurship Awards in 2014 by the President's Award. We are winners of DOSE both regional and national awards and also by the United Nations and Ecuador Hope Prize and ASEAN Business and Investment Summit in Marina Bay Sands, Singapore. So we're also under the unreasonable impact created with Barclays in United Kingdom and the James Dyson Award in London. So we're also an ISO certified machine and we have DNR certifications also with DOH and DOST. So that is my Medway Solutions and Rad Green Solutions in a glimpse. And I surely do expect that there will be a lot of questions, three PPEs and how the disposal method is, but I would be very, very much happy to answer and make the public at ease in terms of the disposal of PPEs. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much, Engineer Jamili. It was really uh, fascinating, uh, especially since Red Green Solutions Corporation is based in Davao City. So uh, before we go to the second, uh, to the fourth speaker, we would like to inform everyone that this web forum is streaming live on the Mindanao's Facebook page, and uh, you can later check it out at our podcast of this uh, forum through the Mindanao Mindanao's podcast on Spotify, Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, and Radio Public. Um, for participants, feel free to send in your questions through our webinar channels on Zoom. Um, also through via the chat button. You may also send your questions via the Mindanao's Facebook Live through the comment section and make sure to introduce yourself and the agency or company that you represent. So our fourth presenter uh, is uh, with uh, Interfacing Development Intervention for Sustainability or EDIS. So part of our measures to fight COVID-19 is to wear this face masks. However, the improper disposal of these face masks not only threatens to further spread the virus, but also contribute to land and water pollution. Sharing her insights is Chinky Goye, the Executive Director of uh, the Davao-based Environmental Advocacy Group, EDIS. Um, good morning, Chinky. Hi, Ma'am Ami. Good morning. Good morning, Pusa. Happy Kadayawan. Uh, Kadayawan. Yes, uh, thank you for inviting Edis no, to share our advocacy work on this uh, web forum. So, uh, while waiting for uh, my presentation. So, uh, this morning I will present because the, this, the, the earlier speakers talk about the guidelines, the policies no, uh, issued by um, DOH, um, EMB and also um, the RAD solutions also shared about their um, their project on uh, waste management. So as uh, as an NGO, this is also working on uh, influencing the public on how do we contribute in addressing the waste no, uh, generation amidst COVID nineteen pandemic. So um, this is more of uh, addressing the public on how we can really contribute you know, in uh, solving the waste uh, problem, especially on the increasing concern about um, disposing of our PPEs during the pandemic. Just an outline, so I will share um, briefly about the status of Davos City Waste before pandemic, you know, so we have uh, data on that. And then second, uh, I wish to share the data on the waste generation during pandemic, but then I was not able to secure the data. So I would just uh, uh, share some uh, figures no, shared online by our uh, partners. So EDIS is an environmental advocacy organization, but we'll, we are also a member of the Eco Waste Coalition uh, uh, network of uh, uh, organizations and individuals really advocating for uh, eco waste no and uh, we have campaigns on the proper disposal of PPEs during this pandemic and of course uh, the calls for action so 
um, yun nga, no, uh, I may not be able to uh, share data or information on how do we really address the, the increasing concerns of PPEs, especially the medical wastes, but this uh, input, my sharing, will be addressed to the public on how we can, share, uh, we can really contribute uh, in uh, solving this concern. So, uh, so before pandemic, no. So we 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 posted this in our Facebook page and in the Sustainable Davao Movement page. So before pandemic, uh, we have this data from the city Enro. As of uh, 2017, the total vo uh, waste generation of Davao City is around 990.703 tons, and then it increased by two by 2.2 percent in 2018, or 1,012.486 uh, tons on a daily basis. But in terms of uh, segregating or uh, in terms of categorizing the waste generation, so most of our or the most or big percentage of our wastes really uh, come from the residential areas, followed by the uh, commercial, then industrial hospital waste is just 1.7. The, the next three slides actually, you know, come from the data of the city annual again. So this data were presented during the Zero Waste uh, Forum held at the Ateneo Davao University last January when we celebrated the Zero Waste Month. So in terms of uh, population, so uh, as of 2018, we already have around 1.7 double venues. So we're already 2020, so siguro we're already 2 million and no more or less 2 million Davaoenios. And in terms of solid waste disposal at the sanitary landfill, so in 2017, we have around 575 tons per day, uh, 2018, 602 tons per day, and um, uh, 614 tons per day in 2019. So please take note that this data is different from the first slide because the first slide uh, talks about the total waste generation and this data is the the data or the average uh, volume of waste disposed to our sanitary landfill which means that not all our wastes uh, generated are actually collected and disposed to the sanitary land uh, so this is the waste analysis and characterization study uh, on the waste generation of the Davao city as of 2017 so in terms of waste generation per source, so same, no, 80% uh, of our waste generated is uh, or comes from the residential areas, followed by the public markets, and then farms, and then so quite long from the hospitals, so just around 1.72%. So that's uh, before our pandemic, no, in terms of the data on our uh, waste generation. Um, so this is also the projected projected waste generation of residential and non-residential sources. So from 2017 and the projected volume until 2027. So as we can see in the data, so we are really expecting that our waste generation will also increase you know, yearly as uh, our population, industries, and other um, economic activities will also increase. You know, and we are also uh, expecting that our volume, our waste, uh, the volume of our waste generation will also increase. So, but during the pandemic, uh, we, as I've said earlier, we don't have the exact data. So we're still trying to uh, gather some data, you no, know, in terms of municipal wastes, medical waste generation. Uh, this is according to the press release issued by Break Free from Plastics, you no? Know? So can you imagine if everyone in the world wore a disposable mask every day for a year, there would be three trillion dirty masks to deal with afterward. And disposable masks are made of uh, or from dense thermoplastics no, that cannot be recycled. So can you imagine, or if we are going to imagine, disposable masks made of plastics can last up to 450 years in the environment and that's really crazy and that's really creepy you know can you imagine mamamatay na tayong lahat the plastics the disposable plastics will still be there in the environment um there's oh, there, there's a um, um a paper issued by asian development bank studying the medical wastes issued by uh some cities in in Asia, uh, we they don't have data 
of Davao City, but we have data of Manila. So in terms of population, the current population of Manila is 14 million, and additional medical wastes generated is about 280 tons per day. So can you imagine that? And the total possible production over 60 days is around 16,000 tons. But if we're going to multiply that for with uh, times five months, no, because five to six months na tayo under lockdown. So they, they, they have generated around 42,000 tons you know, for five months you know, of medical wastes. And there's also a formula. There's also a formula uh, suggested by the Asian Development Bank. You know? So since we don't have that data yet, we can also use this if we're going to compute the Davao City data uh, in the future. So according to Asian Development Bank, so local governments can estimate the potential increase in tonnage over time. So like, for example, for one infected person, the average uh, medical waste produced every day is about 3.4 kilograms. And so if we're going to multiply that with the number of infected persons no, uh, in every city, then that's equivalent to the increase of infectious waste medical per day of outbreak. And also uh, the Asian Development Bank uh, mentioned three COVID-19 outbreaks. Infectious medical waste increased by 600%. So that from 40 tons per day to 240 tons per day. So can you imagine? So can you imagine if uh, we're going to also compute the municipal waste, medical waste in Davao City and also other cities in Mindanao in the Philippines? So where do our disposable TPS go? No. So these are photos uh, taken by the Eco Waste Coalition also issued no, at to our media friends. So these are photos showing the PPEs, especially the face masks, you know, face masks. Uh, they, they're already in our coastal areas, in our ocean, in the sea. So next slide, please. The next, the next few slides uh, are photos actually from our partners. Another photo taken, no, and they, these photos are, are, were actually taken at Baseco compound, no? Kinukuha po ng mga taga Eco Waste Coalition. Uh, this is actually my photo. I was uh, biking around the uh, Deca Homes. Then I saw some face masks on the road. No? So, yan. And then. Yeah. So, as you can see, uh, we have here face masks, also boxes of face shields combined with other wastes. So, pwede naman, pwede pong medyo mabilisan. Okay lang po yan. Ayan, so this, uh, this, photo, this photo was taken by Ocean Asia. No? And also this photo, a very recent photo, we are about to issue this. So we tried to check the, the mix of uh, the, the, the plastic wastes. No? And then we saw some facial or face masks no? combined with other plastic wastes. So if we have this concerns you no know? so what are calls to the public we may not be able to contribute in solving the medical wastes in the hospitals but then as the public as the general public we really we really can contribute in somehow uh, preventing the increase of plastic wastes uh, increase of um, PPEs that are being thrown you know, in the environment that goes to the ocean and so on and affect the marine ecosystem. So we have this cause that uh, even before the pandemic, we've been calling that as a general public, you know, when we go to our office or we attend activities or in our daily lives, we can really bring our own bags and containers and bring our grocery in uh, shopping. And then we say no to plastic leaves and straws. We, we have to purchase our own reusable water bottles and we have to bring our own takeout counter uh, container. Uh, and of course, for the PPEs, we, we call on the public to properly dispose the PPEs. Most PPEs will just be on a one-time use, no? And, um, but of course, as a general public, we, we are not frontliners, so we are calling the public to use reusable face masks, reusable PPEs, no? Um, we we have to use this so we can contribute in uh, decreasing the amount of plastic waste or plastic PPEs being thrown away. 
So the use of reusable masks by the general population would significantly reduce plastic wastes during and after this pandemic. So our partner, Break Free from Plastic, also issued this uh, safety instructions. Very basic. Uh, everyone can really um, uh, follow these instructions, like for uh, handling of a reusable masks, uh, we can wash our reusable mask with soap or detergent or boil in hot water for 10 minutes so we can sanitize our reusable mask. So we will not worry if uh, our reusable masks are contaminated or not. So we also continue to uh, call on the policymakers and implementers to continue to strictly implement the, the Republic Act 9003 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management uh, app and also uh, we continue to call on the city council, the Davos City Council, to enact the single use plastics ban or regulation in, for Davos City. We also call on uh, because there's this proposal of uh, Councillor Giselle Villafuerte to to um, to promote the reusable face masks in Davos City, and we support that. And of course, the slick uh, disposal of the face masks. So we, the general public, know we are encouraged to move away from disposable PPEs and dispose our wastes properly to avert a COVID waste crisis. Let us not allow this health crisis to turn into an even bigger pollution crisis. So that's all. Thank you. And my name is Dr. Sabso Thank you very much, Chintino. Murag, it's really overwhelming to hear all these uh, figures on our PPE, the waste. Uh, and it's everywhere. It's on our coast, it's in our streets, it's just everywhere.